Hey YouTubers, uh, I've been fighting a really annoying hum from both of my REL T9X subwoofers for months. And uh, before you leave any comments below, be sure you read the description below the video. I'm going to walk you through everything I tried that didn't work. I did everything that was in the manual. I did everything that was recommended in all the Rev REL videos. I did everything recommended by the REL technicians I emailed. I did everything recommended by the rail technicians I spoke to on the phone. I checked the house wiring. I did it all. So before you jump in with a comment, read below the video and I'll list everything I tried. I'm also going to list any products I used to fix this problem. But it turns out the problem was the rail wire that ships with the rail subwoofers is not shielded. And I replaced this wire with shielded wire and the hum is now 100% gone. And so the fix only ended up costing me about 30 bucks. And I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how to ditch this wire and how to connect better wire to your rail subwoofers. So here we go. There's three conductors. If you're going to hook one rail subwoofer up to both the left and right channel, you hook the red to the right speaker positive, you hook the yellow to the left speaker positive, you hook the black to either the left or right speaker negative, or you ground it to the chassis of your amplifier. It depends on your application. Now I'm running two rail subwoofers, so what I do on mine is I combined the red and yellow and hooked it to the correct speaker positive. The left subwoofer hooks to the left speaker, the right subwoofer hooks to the right speaker positive. Both negatives for both subwoofers were joined together and grounded to the chassis. Now this is RHEL's recommended hookup method and it works wonderfully except I had a terrible, terrible hum in the subwoofers. You'll notice that there's no shielding on these wires. So if this wire ends up anywhere near an AC cable, it can pick up a 60 cycle hum from that AC cable and then introduce that into your subwoofer. And that's exactly what was happening in my situation. And it's extraordinarily difficult to connect everything to the back of all of your components and not have AC wires near these wires. So what I did was I substituted an identical wire, only this wire has shielding on it. And that shielding keeps that outside interference from entering these cables and then being transferred to the subwoofer. So I'll show you how to wire this up. Okay, let's go ahead and disconnect the original wire from the Nutrix Speak-On connector and connect our new shielded wire. Now the first thing we'll need to do is strip back, oh, about an inch, inch and a half or so of this insulation. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna score a line through the insulation, but don't go too deep. You don't wanna cut into the shielding or the wires underneath. We're just gonna kinda Roll that until we've made it all the way around. Starting where we just made that score, we're going to cut a shallow notch in this vinyl shielding. And we get right here to the very end, we're going to go ahead and push down and make that cut all the way through the vinyl. Now just get your fingernails here on the end where we cut all the way through and we're going to peel on that. There we go, and it'll just split. That's why you don't have to cut through all the way. It'll split open on its own. And so we're just gonna peel that back. And when we get to the line we scored in there, that should just come right off. There we go, we don't need that. Now, we're gonna go ahead and pull this braided shield and foil shield back out of the way, and we're gonna trim that off back here. We don't need any of that extending any further than that. Use whatever you like. A pair of scissors works just fine. This stuff is not very hard to cut. Uh, there's a lot of little fine wires here. Just kind of be patient. You may have to work your way around a little bit and uh, kind of peel things back and keep trimming. You don't want to leave any long wires that might accidentally make contact with something they shouldn't make contact with. So let's go ahead and, and make this as neat as we can here. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, again, let's look between the wires and make sure there's no wire 
sneaking up here where it might make contact. That looks good. Now we're going to slide a piece of heat shrink tubing over this. I've got a, now I've got a piece of heat shrink tubing that's just a little bit bigger round than this wire. And we're going to slide that over. And I'm just going to push that out of the way for now. And go ahead and strip these wires back. And you don't need to strip a whole lot. Eh, a little bit more than a quarter inch, maybe. Okay. Go ahead and slide our heat shrink tubing up. And make sure we've got it over that foil a little bit, just like that. Let's go ahead and shrink that down. There we go. Get all this mess out of the way here. All right, now we're going to transfer this Nutric Speak On connector over to our new wire. So we're going to turn this blue collar counterclockwise. And that just drops out of the way. Now this part here will slide forward and come off. This little white cable clamp will come off. And now we can see where our three wires connect. Now right here on the top, you'll notice a ridge here, here, and a third ridge right there. And that's where the red wire is connected. To the left is where the black wire is connected. We roll it over this way to the right of the red wire, there's nothing hooked up here. This can accommodate four wires, but rail only needs three. And then underneath the red wire is where the yellow wire connects. So let's go ahead and remove those wires. And that just pulls right off. So we don't need that wire anymore. We're going to go ahead and slide the blue collar over the wire and the white cable strain relief over the wire. Now we're ready to make our connections. Okay. That's the bottom of the connector, and that's the top. So we're going to put the red wire in through that hole, and we're going to tighten the screw up. There we go. All right, to the left of where we hooked up the red wire, we're going to hook up the black wire. Just push it into that hole. And tighten the screw. And then underneath the red wire is where we hook up our yellow wire. Again, just push it in the hole and tighten up the screw. All right, we're going to turn this back over where you have the red wire on the top. And you see there's a V-shaped notch there and a square notch there. Well, that goes right like that. The square notch goes to the right of where the red wire connects, and the V-notch goes to the left of where the red wire connects. And the threaded end goes on first, and the silver button here kind of goes somewhere between the red and the black wire. And you'll know when you get it in the position. There we go. It'll go on and come all the way over and cover the white uh, strain relief, except for the very end there. So now we're going to slide the blue collar back on. And be careful not to cross-thread this. We're just going to tighten that up. It doesn't have to be super tight. And that's it.
we've connected our new wire to our Nutrix Speak On connector. Okay, let's prepare the other end of the wire. Now, I like to strip off about four inches or so. I want to make sure I've got plenty. All right, we'll push down the braid insulation. I'm sorry, we'll push down the braid shielding out of, out of our way. And then the foil shielding. We're going to get our red and yellow wires and kind of set those aside. All righty. I'm going to cut my black wire about here. And I'm going to strip off, oh, maybe half an inch or so. All right. And I'm going to make my foil a little bit longer than that piece of wire. And I'm going to pull that braiding out. I don't want all of that in there. And I'm going to kind of mark it about the same length. I'm going to carefully cut my braided shielding here without cutting the wires. And you may have a few wires here you need to trim away. But basically you want the shielding to extend just beyond the end of that black wire. move all that stuff out of the way here. Now then, I'm going to add on an extra piece of black wire because I want this to extend longer than these wires. I'm going to strip off about a half inch of that or so. Now I should have done this already but I got a little carried away with the video and forgot I'm going to put a piece of heat shrink tubing over this whole thing, the same size tubing I used on the other end. It may be a little more difficult now because I've got to push it over this shielding. So uh, bear with me here. I, I should have done that earlier in this process. Oh, that wasn't too bad at all. All right, push that back out of the way. That's going to be perfect. And take a bit more off of there. That'll work pretty good. Now, I'm going to add my black extension wire. And if you're more clever than me, maybe you can figure out a different way of doing this. This is just what I'm doing. And I'm going to solder those two together real quick. There we go. Don't need a whole lot of solder on that. I don't want to make a big old lump that's going to be hard to cover with the heat shrink tubing. Give that just a moment to cool. And so I've got a good electrical and mechanical connection here. That's good. I'm going to pull my foil over that and I'm going to extend the braided shielding over that. So now I've got good contact between my solder connection and this shielding. The reason we want to do that on the amplifier end is we're going to extend the ground from the amplifier to this shielding and all the way down the length of the cable to protect the entire cable from outside interference. And so it's real important here, we want to make sure we don't have any of those little braided wires extending up here where they could get into trouble. So let's make sure that we've got all that ends right here. We don't want any braided wires coming up here and perhaps getting in touch with our positive connectors. All right, that all looks good. I'll pull my heat shrink tubing over that. Just like that. A little bit more. That's good. Now I'm going to shrink that into place. There we go. 
All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and terminate my ground wire here. Okay, that's good. So these two wires will connect to the positive speaker terminal. This wire will extend on up and connect to the top of the amplifier chassis. So let me go ahead and strip these and put on my preferred connector. I'm going to twist those together. So I found this connector on Amazon and I really like it a lot. Um, it's a banana plug that can stack and it's also locking. And so how this works is I'm going to insert my wires into here and I tighten up these little Allen screws. And so that gives me a good connection to this stacking banana plug. And I'm going to put a link to all of these things down below the video. So I've got a good connection there. And how this works is, let's say this is the banana plug for my speaker positive connection on the amplifier. Okay, this slides into that, and you turn this knob, and it expands the tip, and it locks into place so it won't come loose. And then, let's say this is a banana plug on my speaker, that just stacks right into the back, this wire goes up and connects to the chassis, I've got a good solid connection, and my wire is now shielded from here all the way to the subwoofer. And so this eliminates all of the hum and buzz and interference that I was experiencing previously. And all I had to do was get rid of the rail wire and use a shielded wire. Um, it's a mystery to me why rail doesn't include a shielded wire with their subwoofers. But it's an easy fix. I think I spent about $30 on 30 feet of wire. So it's a cheap fix. Sorry, I can't get you a better view. It's very crowded back here. But here is the left speaker positive connection. And you can see the yellow and red wires leading off to the subwoofer and the black wire that comes on up here to the chassis ground. And I use those stacking locking connectors on both the positive and negative speakers uh, conductors uh, just so the cables would plug in properly. The uh, speaker cables are so stiff that I, I have to have them the same length where they connect to the amplifier. I hope you find this helpful. Please like and subscribe if you did. Thank you.